What's going on guys? You've asked and you've asked and you've asked and today you shall receive. I have been asked numerous times about the list of tools that every RV should have or at least a basic RV toolkit, um, at least from a technician's perspective. So today I'm going to be going over the five tools that should be in every RV. It doesn't matter if you have a travel trailer or a class A motorhome like this one. These are the five tools that everybody should have. They all have their purpose. Most issues in your RV can be solved by you, the owner, uh, with a little bit of know-how and a couple of tools on board. There's plenty of support online, not just me, on how to make all of the most basic repairs, diagnostics. Um, a lot of things in RVs are very simple issues. Um, some of the more complex ones, sure, if you're not that skilled, you will still have to bring it in for service, but you can save yourself a lot of money by having these basic tools on board and knowing how to use them. So first things first, we have our impact or driver. Nothing special, don't need anything powerful. Um, a good set of bits is gonna benefit you, but honestly, the number two square, number two Phillips are all you're ever really gonna use in an RV. Um, that's what 90% of the fasteners are, just to be honest with you. Two of them, that's it. But it doesn't hurt to have a good bit set. You're gonna use an impact for everything from tightening hinges and latches and small things to installing things on the wall of the coach, uh, removing hidden panels uh, where you're gonna find things like your water heater behind or electronic components. Drill is just gonna be your best friend. It's the key to everything. And it's hard enough to do this here with one hand, but as soon as I get this bit out, um, one more thing you're gonna be able to do with the drill, if you do have the manual stab jacks or uh, level legs, you'll be able to bring those up and down with a simple three-quarter adapter. If you don't have that, a socket adapter with a three-quarter socket will do just fine. Your drill is going to absolutely be one of your best friends. It's gonna be involved in every project you do on the RV. No way around it. Going on to number two, an entire drawer full of diagnostic tools, and this is the one I could not live without, and that's a multimeter. You don't need anything super expensive, but try not to go cheap. This is the CL800 from Klein Tools, and it's been my favorite for RVs so far. It does everything I needed to do. Voltage, amperage, capacitance, uh, checks for ohms and resistance. You have the amp clamp up top, uh, which is used for a lot of different things on an RV. I'm checking for parasitic draw, um, checking to see what kind of load you have on the batteries when you're trying to figure out a solar setup. But the most important feature is right here, checking for voltage at the pedestal. Low voltage is the number one killer of RV air conditioners. And a lot of times when parks are overcrowded, you will have voltage issues. It's a very simple check. You can check 50s, you can check 30s, you can check any source of power really with a multimeter. Um, everything from AC circuits to DC circuits, it, it's all there. So checking your pedestal voltage is extremely important. Making sure that voltage is transferring over into the coach at your outlets, you're gonna use it for that as well. You're gonna use it for testing small appliances. You're gonna test lighting circuits with it. You're gonna test some refrigerator stuff, not so much the residentials. Um, if you're working on a slide room, the very first tool that I'm gonna grab is gonna be a multimeter to make sure my motors are getting power. So it's a very versatile tool. You can even use it for basic maintenance, checking out your batteries, making sure your batteries have good voltage and your converters have uh, a good output. It's just a very versatile tool. Here I'm checking for amp draw, seeing what kind of amps the coach is drawing off of the batteries. Um, you can use the same test to test for parasitic draw if you have issues with batteries draining. You can test all your lighting circuits on the exterior of the coach as well as the seven way itself. And then once you get to a little bit more advanced stages of the multimeter, you're gonna be diagnosing things like your water heaters and furnaces. Most of the diagnostics on any of your appliances will only need a multimeter. So again, it's gonna be your best friend in the RV, uh, especially if you plan on doing any kind of your own diagnostics. Uh, multimeter is absolutely a must have. A lot of people have these test lights, that's great. A power probe if you're somebody who does this day in and day out, but the multimeter is ultimately going to be the number one tool. Moving on to number three, hand tools. This one's gonna be generalized again. It, it, it's hard to say just one hand tool you would need. Just a general set of hand tools is all you need. Socket set, a 3A socket set is one of the more important. 
A quarter inch will do just fine, but you're not going to have the sizes you're going to have in the 3 8 set that you would in the quarter set. To your smaller hand tools, a set of Allen keys is going to be great. Uh, you're going to find mostly SAE uh, on the coach, but occasionally you'll run into a little bit of metric and even a Torx bit from time to time. Some people call those star bits, but it's a Torx bit. A set like this is pretty inexpensive. You'll spend less than 20 bucks on something like this. Next thing is going to be a multi-bit screwdriver, something that has uh, changeable bits on it. You're not always going to be able to get the drill in some of those tight spots, so having a bit like that is going to work better than something like this uh, in all those tight areas. Next thing is going to be pliers. You don't need every single one of these pairs of pliers. Uh, some wire strippers and crimpers for electrical connections is going to be very important, probably the most important one you'll need. And then really just your basic pliers. Um, most plier sets will come with your basics, uh, your needle nose, uh, a set of like slip joint pliers, um, some cutters, any one of those like three or four packs that you see uh, in a, you know, it doesn't need to be a high end brand when it comes to pliers if you're planning on just doing some DIY stuff but your basic set will do just fine. Don't forget about your basic screwdrivers. Um, the multi-bit driver is great, but of course, having regular screwdrivers is also beneficial. Getting onto the smaller tools, you need little pry bars. You're, you're gonna come into tons of situations where you're gonna need a little tiny pry bar to pry off some trim or some fascia to get to something. Uh, I usually recommend the little plastic ones because they won't mar or scratch anything but the metal one is gonna benefit you as well on some of the tougher stuff. Razor blades, uh, some kind of scraper. These are fantastic for removing sealants uh, wherever needed when you're resealing things. And then of course, the plastic razor blades as a replacement are great because they're not gonna scratch any of your finishes and you can be a little more aggressive with them. You can usually get those by the pack. Wrenches, not super important, but if they come in your toolkit, I definitely recommend having them. Uh, there are some places that you can't get sockets and wrenches Again, you don't need anything super fancy. They don't need to be ratcheting. Uh, most of those basic tool sets you can get uh, from Home Depot, like a Husky or something like that, will usually have a lot of these hand tools like wrenches and Allen keys in them already. And you don't need anything fancy. A basic tool kit is going to be just fine. Uh, brand is not important. Having them is important because you're going to run into times where you need hand tools. Um, even something as basic as changing out a battery here, you see we need hand tools to remove the fasteners on the battery. Um, moving on to uh, just changing a control board or anything like that, you're going to need sockets to get those off. Um, you're going to need crimpers to make these crimp connections. You're going to need strippers and crimpers to make a connection in a wire or a pair in a wire if you were to use a butt connector. Now this stuff all looks a little complex. This is a motor home, um, but even a starting solenoid. Uh, battery solenoid. You're going to need hand tools to replace that as well. You're going to need them on all different types of travel trailers, all the way up to Class A motorhomes. Having a basic set of tools is super important. And again, you don't need a big collection. You don't need 20 pairs of pliers and every size of wrench. It's, it's really not important, but having at least the basics on board is very important. That being one of the more important, you're going to use that consistently. And the next on the list is going to be flashlights. There are many different kinds. There are kinds that you just hold and point. There are kinds that you can stick to stuff. There are kinds that you can hang. There are kinds that you can wear on your head and kinds that you can stick in your pocket. They clearly all have a purpose. Having a decent light in your coach is the most important one though. Uh, reason being is a lot of times you're gonna be working on lighting circuits and things like that, transfer switches and areas where you don't have light and you're going to need sufficient light to make that repair. Um, especially down here in compartments and you're getting into the back of cabinets and things like that, having a good light is going to be super important. Having something rechargeable is even more beneficial. Uh, something like this does a little bit of everything. It's got a magnet. You can pivot the head. Um, again, I'm not going to try and tell you that you need to go buy all these expensive flashlights that I have because it's really irrelevant on what kind you have as long as you have it. There are some good brands out there that I will recommend. Um, LED Lenser being one of them. Uh, Milwaukee makes some good lights. Stinger makes good lights. Streamlight makes lights. Um, there's a lot out there. And again, I'm not going to be brand specific on them. Just having 
any kind of light in the coach is going to be super important. Be careful because you could end up like me and having a serious flashlight addiction and spend way more money than you ever need to spend on flashlights. There's something about it. It becomes addicting. Your next one here is going to be a caulk gun. A lot of you probably already have one of these, but it's going to be one of your most used tools in the RV once again. It's going to be used for basic maintenance, it's going to be used for replacing things, and it's going to be used for fixing. Um, you need it for roof sealants, you need it for side sealants, you have sealants all over your coach, and it's something that's going to be considered maintenance and keep up on the regular. Things like your taillights when you're replacing them, or even if the sealant just becomes cracked. Uh, any kind of your side marker lights, compartments, Anything that's really attached to the side of the coach is going to need to be sealed at some point. It's part of just your general maintenance. Uh, every, everything on the side of the coach is sealed. Let's put it that way. Everything on the side of the coach. And you're going to want to keep an eye on all of it. Like your roof seals, something you should be checking at least twice a year or almost every time you camp. You're going to find little voids and cracks in there and you're going to touch it up with either Dicor or Forever Lap Sealant, you know, whatever your sealant of choice is, you're going to need to be doing that on a regular basis. So having a caulk gun is going to be another very beneficial tool that every RV should have inside of it. Again, you don't need the best caulk gun in the world, but I do recommend buying at least a decent one because you're going to be using it pretty often and in some cases using it for a long period of time. Bonus tool, it should have been in hand tools, is a razor knife. You're going to use that all the time. You're going to be cutting sealants, uh, replacing compartment doors, or just simply resealing things. Um, you're going to be using it to remove windows and replace windows or remove the sealant and replace it. Same with roof seals. You're going to need it to remove sealant and cut things out like roof vents when replacing them. It's an all-around important tool. You're going to use it for all kinds of things uh, around the RV. I do recommend the ones with the razor blade because you can just replace them and you consistently have a sharp edge on your knife versus a pocket knife that's always dull. And whether it's a small little travel trailer or a Class A motorhome, these five tools are pretty much all you're going to need to take charge of your own repairs. Because with the proper tools and just a little bit of training, I believe anybody can do anything. Again, these aren't every tool you'll ever need to fix an RV. Of course, there are more along the road or down the road, I should say, they are generally the tools that I'm gonna grab. If, if someone told me I have five tools to grab and I have a hit list of issues on an RV, those are the five tools I'm gonna grab. Um, hand tools, again, are, are generalized. Uh, a decent toolkit, like a DeWalt, Husky, something like that, is, is gonna do just fine, as long as it has most of those things. You've got your wrenches, a few sockets, some Allen keys, um, and basic hand tools. As far as power tools go, there's no specific brand that's going to be better than the other than an RV. Again, you don't need much power. You're just going to do damage and wall or out holes um, with a big M18 impact or something like that. There's no need for having something like that in an RV unless you're planning on doing any kind of work on like your axles or anything like that. Um, that's a whole different ballpark though. As far as diagnostics go, a lot of it is easy once you understand how they work. Um, I've talked about it before. Um, but for RV owners, the NRVTA's home study course is a phenomenal tool for you guys. You can take it on your own time. Uh, it's just like sitting in the classroom and you're going to learn a lot about your RV um, and a lot about how to diagnose basic issues and save yourself a ton of money. If you guys are interested in that, um, you can find it on my website, thatrvtech.com. I have a link on there. Um, again, it is a phenomenal tool. I recommend every RV owner take it just because having that base knowledge can not only get you out of a sticky situation in the last minute, but also just save you a bunch of money down the road with all these basic little repairs that you would otherwise be paying a, a large shop labor rate to get fixed. Um, I'll eventually have another video similar to this. Um, for those of you who came to this video as new technicians or somebody interested in getting into the industry, um, and kind of go more in depth into my toolbox, um, the tools I can't live without and the tools that I've wasted money on. Uh, if you guys are interested in more content like this, I am going to be bringing a lot more of my content uh, that I started with on TikTok over to YouTube. I like the platform over here a little bit better. I like being able to get longer videos with a little bit more information in them and not be so crunched for time. Um, so if you haven't already followed me or subscribed to me here, 
Um, I will have a lot more content coming here uh, versus TikTok. Still have content coming there, um, but of course I'm going to push more of it here. So thanks you guys for sticking around and hope to see you soon.